What is going on? This is Mortal Mike. It is go time. This is another Watcher of Realms video. Today, I'm going to be talking about my actual favorite, favorite champion in the game, Cerberus. I'm going to be telling you guys two things. One, why I enjoy using this champion so much, and two, why I'm going to be pulling for him, but technically you should be pulling for him. So this video is going to be coming out on a Friday. Today's Thursday. I'm going to make this a quick edit so I can put it out for you guys. There's some reasons to and not to get this champion, but let's dig into it, shall we? First things first, Cerberus may be my second most used champion in the game. Number one is probably still going to be Silas. I thought maybe Silas slash Brokeer, um, because Brokeer is my first defender thought over anything. I use this guy everywhere. I use him in Void Rift, especially against the Torador boss. Before I got Valeria, he was my go-to champion to just deal extra damage over time that just helped, you know, push the needle forward. Whenever Torador would go to that top area um, and have all that health to try to put down, and I had Silas and I didn't have the Vierna boost, I needed that extra damage and he really was the one that pulled through for me very often. So Arena, of course, the AOE damage, him and Aatrox beside each other is one of the top options people are choosing to counter the Boreas comps that are inside the game right now because Boreas on Global hasn't gotten a nerf yet. Him having no nerf now means he's still insanely strong in Arena. This is one of the best ways people can counter it because they can put down two inexpensive champions and start getting kills a little bit earlier, which helps do more damage to the other team and eventually you may get a win out of that. I'm mentioning everything that I use this guy, and I actually use this guy in all of these areas. In promotional raid, he does an absolute mockery on melee attack. Melee attack, if I'm not mistaken, is the one where they auto heal while they're dealing damage, and he can cover basically two to three lanes by himself. Even though the lanes are split, since he already does his regular AoE damage, which is nice, we'll get into that in the kit. He also sends an extra AoE damage area out that does damage, if I'm not mistaken, does slows all also. So the dude is a beast. He's a really good champion. Gold and EXP raids. He guards the entrance and damages pretty much any enemy that comes through. Really nice. There's been instances where he sold up those bad boys, which is really freaking cool. I used him in gear rate one. I think I still use him. I used him to beat gear rate 121. He was a part of the team that I had. Insane damage right there at the front gate. And he hits everything repeatedly. So it's really nice. And artifact material raid. When I was playing and I didn't have Valeria, um, he, I used him to get through levels 15 through 17 of Artifact Material Rage. But I ended up getting Valeria and she did more damage to the boss, which helped me win. He was a really good option to kill the adds and still do a little bit of damage to the boss. Next, I used him in Faction Trials. He's a necessity for the end levels of Faction Trials because of all the burst damage he can do. Um, in those moments, you need him with those big guys are coming down, the guys with the tentacle heads are coming down or those um, sludge guys come through, he can solo those portions by himself and then come back in time to do it a second time. So he's been really good there. Tide, obviously he's probably one of my highest damage dealers in Tide. I think Nyx is gonna always be the highest damage dealer in Tide just because of her attack and what it does. Him covering such a wide area and doing so much damage helps you get a ton of kills very early on and preserve the health of your other champions. Um, not to mention that he inflicts slow on a lot of the enemies that he's attacking as well. So last but not least, my favorite place to use him in the game so far is Immortal Codex and the Conqueror boss. It's a flip up between him and Aatrox. Aatrox has better survivability because he comes back faster. Well, not better survivability, better revivability. Honestly, the truth for you, Cerberus does more damage while he's alive in the stage that he's alive. So if you can keep him in the fight with a good Lunacy Visor, He'll stay in there longer and do more damage, or you can give him ISN so you can just get a whole bunch of damage in a quick period of time, uh, but he's gonna be gone before you know it. The reason why I said that I'm gonna be summoning for this guy, which he probably shouldn't be, is that I have a very niche scenario here. So with my Cerberus, he is currently, I'm gonna scroll up so you guys can see it too, he's currently Awakened 2. And the reason why I say that I'm gonna be summoning for him because I wanna get him Awakened 3, I'm gonna go over just a brief part of his Awakenings, at Awaken 1, uh, within 10 seconds of, deploy of deployment, all ground area effects will slow the enemies in range. So for 10 seconds, he's automatically applying a slow to all the enemies that he drops on, which is really nice. I think A2 is just an attack increase, yes. But A3 is where things start to get interesting. When HP drops below 50%, he's a chaotic champion, so he's gonna do that, that's his goal, doubles the damage dealt by the ground area 
ground effect area per second, doubles it. It doesn't say 50% more, 100% more, it just says double. So there's no extra math involved or confusion about this. His initial attack right here, he'll never be at 50% health with this, but it would double it if he did it. But the um, water of decay will end up being double. So that's gonna be 100% AOE damage, and that's maxed out with my skills, of course. Then you also have the uh, passive, or upon death, he does 140%, that jumps to 280%, and it's not including the damage boost he gets in the ultimate, which is even crazier. So during the ultimate, he increases his damage by 100%. We're increasing it by 100% more. <laughs> and then we're increasing that other part by 140%. So you get an idea of how much damage this guy really is gonna be doing. It's insane AOE damage, and as far as I know, I don't think he has an enemy cap on how many enemies he can hit at once. I know Nyx doesn't have an enemy cap. As far as I've seen, I've never seen him have a limit on how many enemies she can hit. I think he's the same way. So when he's planted on the ground, he does insanely high amounts of damage. And the way to look at him is like, look at him as a shot trooper. Look at him as a grenade champion. You don't expect him to be out there for very long, but he does crazy high damage for a very low cost. And then, when he dies, if this is fully skilled, he reduces the cost of every mage you have on your team by two. The mages are known to be the, high, be the highest cost summoning champions in the game. Look at just that Boreas right here, just for an example. We're a fast way for you to see this. So his cost is 19, that's my top five or so. 26, let's see a 17. Going over here to Comet. Comet is 19, you got Vierna, Vierna is 20. That's two off of every last one of them. So if you have like four mages, that's eight costs cut out of your expenses to put your champions on the field. So it's a really nice plus. That's why I'm gonna be pulling for this guy, but I'm also gonna say this as well. There's more changes coming to the game that some of you guys may have heard of and you may have your, you know, your initial reactions. I'll say don't be too hasty because there are more changes than we know. They're adjusting the way that poison works in the game, but They've altered it to an extent where some of them are getting a rename, such as Liam on a test server, his poison is called Neurotoxin, which does the exact same thing as the original poison. So those people that were thinking that he's gonna be like their saving grace for gear rate three, he's been doing great for them, now he's gonna be useless, he's still great. But the reason why I was saying that, why did I even bring up poison? Because there's one other thing that we gotta cover on this guy here. If he gets his exclusive artifact, which is a really nice one, but I gotta test it, of course. I don't wanna say it's amazing until I test it. I wanna say it's amazing until I tested it fully, but it looks impressive. Increases damage by 0.2% every time HP drops by 1%. Now, if you notice, when he does his attacks, they drop substantially as he throws those little water decay attacks out there. So his attack continually goes up. And then it also says water of decay can inflict poison on targets lasting for five seconds. Here's what's crazy about the new poison boost that's going on. It can happen from multiple sources now. So if he's doing poison and another champion is doing poison, and another champion is doing poison, that's damage that's gonna be stacking very similar to the burning buff. Very, very, very similar to the burning debuff. And what's also interesting, he also does magic damage. So I don't know what, what, what part that plays in that. I mean, even the Heart of Arteries could play in that, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't choose that for this. That's gonna to go to Scorch. But, um, or Amulet of Arteries, whatever it is, it's a, it's a mythical artifact. I wanna get Unending Relic because I wanna use it on this guy. I wanna see how the poisons will stack when he's putting it into play because that would be very interesting to see him do a ton of poison damage also, which is technically magical damage, which is essentially just like burn damage. Yeah, it's been adjusted, but some of them have just been renamed to preserve it on other champions. So it's really cool. I wouldn't be too hasty on that yet. It's better to test it than to guess it. When we get a chance to try this content out, try these new adjustments, we'll find out why. And I also think the best thing about it is it can happen from multiple sources. One of the limits of poison champions that we had before, and I mentioned this because technically he could become a poison champion with the exclusive artifact. One of the issues that we ran into was that poison was basically only one debuff. You could technically make it two if you had um, a Racha involved, you could technically make that two, but it was technically only one debuff. So you, can, you only thought about bringing one poison champion into the game, and since there's not many poison champions in the game, you don't really think about comps for them, and it's hard to get the actual champions to do it with. 
Now, if you have those champions, you can put them in the mix and they can work together better. Why do I say that that's useful? This is just my opinion. I got a little more homework to do on the math here, so let's be honest. But I think of things like the Immortal Codex against Boreas. Poison wasn't doing amazing against Boreas. It was useful, it was helpful, but the challenge was just kind of limited to that one or two champions that can put it on there. So it wasn't doing amazing. This is just my experience. So if I am wrong here, I apologize in advance, but when I use poison, I just, I got some decent damage from Cute. My maj the majority of my damage that I got was from Zilla too, because her ultimate boosts her attack so much and burning stacks as a, um, as a benefit to that. So there's other champions that when they do things like their ult or have an ability to get their attack, attack percentage to skyrocket, then poison can take advantage of that, which would be a stronger poison. So I just wanted to mention that, I wanted to make a very short video. If you're hesitant to summon this guy, the other reason why I said that you that I should summon for him because I'm trying to get him A3 and I'm very close to getting him. I also think I'm very close to Penny. And if I get trust um, instead, I'm, I'm completely fine with that. But the reason why I said that you shouldn't do it is to be completely honest, and let's be very clear here, he's very, I don't wanna say he's very easy to get, but he's one of the easier champions. He's one of the easier um, legendaries to get. Yeah, he's chaotic, but he drops in this pool, fourth on the left. He drops in the common stuff. So that's how I normally get him is during the um, just everyday summon, not everyday, but anytime I'm doing summons, he drops during these. So he's a little easier to get, but I will say if you do not have a Cerberus, it is not a bad idea for you to do it. It's not a bad idea for you to summon to get a Cerberus this time because like I said, he's my second most used champion in the game. He's one of my favorite progressive champions that I've used in the game. He's a lot easier to get than a Boreas. It's not gonna do the same job, of course, but he makes champs like Boreas easy to use because then their costs come down by two. I think he's one of the best utility champions in the game just because when you need extra damage and you're hitting the panic button, and the reason why I said progression is you don't have the proper gear to get your champions doing insane damage or you know, you're still trying to get through the last levels of gear rate, one, two, and three, and you need a way to get really good damage in to get the upper hand and get to the next thing. Cerberus is the guy that can do that really well for you. I will say he's an amazing champion. I'll cover trust at some point in time when I pay more attention to him. But for now, my focus is on trying to pull an extra Cerberus for my account because I want to get him at A3 because his damage literally doubles when his health goes under 50%. And he's built to go under 50% health. So. This has been your boy Mortar Mike. I just wanted to make a short video for you guys. For those of you guys that are hearing, don't pull, don't pull, don't pull. There's instances where you should pull. There's instances where it's good to pull, especially when you're early game. Go ahead and get that champion, man. Second most used champion in the game other than Silas slash Brokira on my account. I use him all the time. So I recommend you guys, if you haven't got him, it's not a bad time to get him. And you'll see what I mean. You'll see what I mean when you use him. Some people be like, oh, he dies really quickly. He's supposed to. He's a chaotic champion. Most of them are built to die. That's their benefit. This has been your boy Mortal Mike. I hope you guys have an amazing, amazing summoning weekend. Whether you're saving or summoning, I hope you guys get what you're looking for. And I know there's some awesome banners along the way, some new champions coming out really soon. I gotta finish up my Guild v. Guild battles. I will say too, this is just a small thing to include in here. Make sure you guys, I'm gonna make a video on this. I'm gonna go ahead and just make a video on this. Make sure you guys are using those friendly face-off events. Oh my goodness. Oh, one more thing to mention. Right now, I'm using Cerberus on the test server. He's just in my arena at the very beginning. I can't show it because it's on test server. But he's at the beginning of all of my waves and he's just, I just plant him at the door because this is um, single target damage. I plant him at the door, I built him up, plant him at the door, he kills the first guy and, and other guys can't, comp, can't uh, recoup fast enough to win. But this is just against bots because I'm trying to get my arena up in there so I can get some more difficult stuff. Probably some more content coming out from Fasty that you guys should be checking out. He's the one that requested me do it, so figured I'd put that in the motion. What's going on? This is Future Mike. Um, Mortar left something out, so I had to come in here and adjust it. Um, there are two ways that you want to play with servers. So you could go for the peak damage where you can give him Eye of Sin. He could do really high damage in a really quick period of time because you don't expect him to stay around for long. He won't if you want him to. Or you can give him Lunacy Virus if you want to stay a little bit alive a little bit longer. But the reason why I say there's two ways you can play with this guy. More, you gotta do a better job including this in your videos. I'm tired of showing up back in time just to say his peak burst damage 
comes from allowing him to die while his ult is active. So it's a timing game. If you see he's about to die and his ult's about active, turn that bad boy on because he's gonna get that 100% damage boost and a 140% damage boost. And if he's 8-3, that's another double damage he's gonna be doing on top of that, which is insane AOE damage. Or, or, if you just want to stay alive, do a whole bunch of damage and slow targets down for the first 10 seconds, you can do that too. I'm just putting that out there. There's two ways to use this guy. Uh, Lunacy Vibes, if you want to keep him alive, if you just want to go in there and do a whole bunch of damage real quick, I send is the way to go. Future Mike out. Wait, wait, I can't, I can't do the same thing he does. Future Mike out. Y'all stay safe out there. I'm using this guy just because this is cheap champion you can put in a lot of spots. I will say get this guy. He's a great champion. Um, I use him very, very often. Building him with some high attack. You don't need attack speed, which is even better. So you can go with crit damage and crit rate on him. You can get a little rage regen, but it's not as necessary because you don't expect him to be on the field for long. That being said, he's one of my favorite champions. He's my favorite champion in the game. Since I pulled him, he's been my favorite champion. There's other champions that are better. He's my favorite one because of how many comps he worked in for me. I will say he's one of the best progression champions in the game. That is my take because he helped me progress. <laughs> this has been your boy Mortar Mike. Y'all have an amazing weekend. I hope y'all have a dope time. Put down in the comments if you guys have started your summons already and you've seen this video, let me know if you pulled yourself a Cerberus, if you already have a Cerberus, if you have any issues with Cerberus, ask it in the comments. I sometimes jump in the comments and I respond like I'll go through the whole chain of responding to everybody's comments. And that's just because you guys have been so awesome. You've been helping the channel to grow even while I've been getting stuff together. You guys may not know this, this is actually a different place. I did the exact same thing as before. I straight duplicated the set. I'm in a different spot now, having fun. But it's been your boy more than Mike. Let's have a dope weekend. I hope you have an awesome time. May your shards be valuable and used properly. And if they suck, may they never be forgotten. This has been your boy Mike. Take care, too.